Hey, I hope you're doing well today, and most importantly, you're doing your very best to practice day in, day out. If you haven't already, I want you to go all in. Go all in, start small, and start by building a steady plan. Start by building something for the long term, let's say for a minimum of three months, possibly to six months. You can use the Direct Hub Study Planner or the Direct Hub Excel Sheet in the link below. Go all in. It's so important that you just get started. It's about the quality of your practice, not the quantity. So if you're going to do one hour quality practice, that's excellent. If you do that during the work week, one hour each day, and on the weekend, you're going to put in maybe four to six hours if possible. Nothing will be perfect. What matters the most is that you get started. You make this a habit. It's hard at the beginning, but with time, it does get easier. It becomes natural to you and it will become part of your daily routine. You're going to do this for months and it's going to be totally worth it. And I believe you've got everything it takes to do just that. And to get you started, we're going to solve this FE type question together covering normal distribution. It's a conceptual question and it's select all that apply. So we're given these graphs and I want you to analyze these A, B, and C, then select all the true statements. Select all the true statements. So pause the video, do this on your own, come back and check your solution with mine. Here we go. So given these normal distribution plots A, B, and C shown which of the following statements are true, true, true. Select all that apply. All the ones that apply are the ones we want to select. Now we're given in this case A, B, and C and their normal distribution graphs. Very important. We must know this for all FE disciplines, whether it's a calculation based question or conceptual based question like this one, an alternative type question. In the course, in my civil FE review course, I cover all of this concepts, calculation based, how to use the calculator to go fast. That's what I cover entirely in my course. If you're interested in something like that, check out the link below. But now let's solve this. So select all that applies. So we're given A, B, and C. First of all, when I see normal distribution, I want you to do this too. Note the axis of symmetry. There's always going to be an axis of symmetry. And normal distribution will always be symmetric. It always has the same mean, median, and mode. Again, concept. Normal distribution always has the same mean, median, mode, and it has an axis of symmetry. So what I'm going to do is do it for each one. So for A, the axis of symmetry is right at the center. I'll denote it like that for A. Now for B, we have an axis of symmetry, and that's actually where we have that Y axis that goes up, and it looks something like that for B. Now the axis of symmetry for C will be the last one, and that will be right at the middle. Why that's important, let's say I'm just looking at A here. The axis of symmetry tells me the right side is symmetric to the left side. And now most importantly, we know the mean is going to be at that axis of symmetry, the mean value. So we will call the mean here, which is the average. We take, let's say, test for, let's say, a compression test, concrete compression test. We do 30 tests. We get the data, and then we find the mean. That's the mean we're going to find, and that is going to be the mu value, the population mean. And in this case, we know for A, the mean is going to occur here at the axis of symmetry on the x-axis. So that's going to be the mu, Greek letter mu for mean for A. For B, it's the same process right at the middle. That's going to be for B. And for C, it's right at the middle. So that's going to be mu C. Now with all of this, I noticed something. A is at the far right, B is in the middle, C is at the far left. So we know A will be the greatest, B is in the middle, and C will be the smallest. So I can even make up numbers. Let's say for A, the mean is going to be, let's use 1. For B, since it's at the middle, it has to be between 1 and mu C. So we can just use 0. 
just to make up a number. In fact, mu zero, the mean being zero, is the standard mean when we use the standard normal distribution method, which uses the z-scores. We use the z-score to not do calculus or work with the distribution function. Just know with the standard normal distribution, when we use the z-scores, the mean is always zero. So we can just say it's zero right at the middle for b. Now for c, we can say, because this is zero, this is one, it's to the left of zero. So it has to be negative. And yes, it can be negative. We're gonna put negative one for that one. So now we can order these in terms of the mean. We're gonna see the mean for A is going to be bigger than the mean for B, and that's gonna be bigger than the mean for C. And based on this, we can pick one of these. So now let's look at this. So this says standard deviation. So we're going to ignore the first three for now. It says B has a larger mean than A. Is that true? Where's B? B is right here. It's zero. Or it's going to be to the left of A. That tells me that's false. B does not have a larger mean than A. That is false. C has a smaller mean than A. So C is going to be here. The mean of A is here. Negative one, the number we made up is way to the left, right? A is one, that is true. C has a smaller mean, an average, than A. So we already picked one. And that's covering the mean, the average value. Now let's go into the standard deviation. So the standard deviation measures the dispersion of data about the mean with respect to the mean or in other words it measures that variability of data with respect to that mean and the standard deviation standard deviation will be the letter sigma and this is the population standard deviation greek letter sigma so what we will do in this one is look at this and look at the shape for the standard deviation so we know if the graph, if the normal distribution graph is broad and fatter, it's going to have more variability in data, more dispersion about the mean. And notice normal distribution plot A is going to be very broad when we compare that to B. So normal distribution A will have a larger standard deviation, more variability, more dispersion of data about the mean the mean which is in the middle as we denote it. So this is broader and we can make up a number here for A. So the standard deviation for A, let's just use for that one a value of two. Let's just call that two. Now, when we look at B, notice it's not so broad when we compare that to A. So for B, it's going to be skinny and it's gonna be taller. It has a larger peak. So it's tall and skinny. So all the data here, about the mean is going to be very close to the mean. We have less variability of the data. So for B, the standard deviation, we can make a, a number for that. Let's say it's 0 0.5. The standard deviation is 0 0.5. And the last one is C. So C is somewhere between the middle when we compare it to A and B. So it's still broad. It's still broad. So we have variability or let's say a, a good amount of variability about the mean, but it's not going to be as slim as B. So we know the standard deviation for C is going to be in the middle, and we can say that's going to be one. So these are just numbers I'm throwing out just to show you with numbers how that standard deviation changes when we compare all of these to each other. So we're gonna say the standard deviation of A is going to be the largest, then it's going to be the standard deviation of C, then it's going to be the standard deviation of B. So A has the largest amount of variability, and we know in civil engineering, just to give you some context, let's say I have a compression test that I do for concrete. I take the concrete cylinder, I compress it with a load P, and then with that, we do it in the lab, find that load P, then we can determine F prime C, the concrete compression strength. So we do the calculation, and let's say we do this for a minimum of 30 samples. What we will do is plot this, then maybe we'll get a normal distribution graph, find the average, find the mean, then what we can do is find the standard deviation. 
And if we realize that standard deviation is going to be high, it tells us we have a lot of variability of this data for this data. And that tells us this test or what we did, these tests, what we did are not really re reliable. It's not reliable because we have a high standard deviation. And we compare that to the standard deviation set by a standard, the ASTM standard. So in general, for the most part in engineering, a higher standard deviation is not a good thing, but we know in other situations, a higher standard deviation can be a good thing. For the most part in engineering, higher standard deviation means more unpredictability in the data, more variability, more dispersion about the mean. So that's that in terms of engineering. So we know based on this, let's look at the standard deviation. The standard deviation of A will be the biggest. So A has a larger standard deviation than C. Yes, we said that. B has a larger standard deviation than C. So B is going to be the very skinny one. That doesn't, 0 0.5, very skinny. Compared, comparing that to C, that is not true. And now the last one, B has the smallest standard deviation. B has the smallest, yes it does. That's going to be the one that has a very high peak and it's going to be very skinny, very slim, so less variability. That means it has the smallest standard deviation.